If you needed any more proof about just how good Jets general manager Joe Douglas is, well, I got some more evidence for you. Well, 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 welcome back to New York Sports Wicker Media. I'm Watts UK99. Thank you, as always, for taking the time to watch these videos. If you're brand new, welcome aboard. Please like and subscribe. If you're returning, welcome back. Please like. I appreciate everybody's time. All right, so Pro Football Focus just put out an article talking about each NFL team's salary cap health as far as what they have to work with, their roster health, their draft capital, free agency, all these different types of things. And they ranked all these teams from number one to number 32. So what we're gonna do here is break down all five components that Pro Football Focus used. We're gonna talk about the Jets along, and I'll give you the rankings for each AFC East team as well. And again, it's going to show you just what kind of a job Joe Douglas is really doing with the New York Jets. So with this article, uh, what Pro Football Focus did is they used five different categories to evaluate all 32 teams. Okay, so first of all, you have number one, this is the most important, top 51 veteran valuation. All right, top 51 veteran valuation. This is the total value of all players on each club's top 51 players, leaving out 2023 draft picks. Okay, so during the off season, only the 51 largest cap hits count against a team's salary cap. So what PFF did was they used each team's current top 51 cap hit players, they removed rookies, calculated their total value. Okay, because here's the thing, you can have all the salary cap space in the world, but if you don't have talent on your roster, of what use is, this, is the cap space? And as if you're a Jets fan like I am, you know how true that rings. For years, the Jets had cap space and some of the worst talent in the NFL. So as far as the Jets veteran valuation, they calculated this in terms of dollars. So the higher the dollar amount, the better. The Jets came in fifth in the NFL in this criteria with $387 million in terms of player value, okay? They actually put Buffalo at one and Miami at two. I still think Miami is tremendously overhyped. What Factoring in Tua, they still act like Jalen Ramsey and Xavier Howard are 25 years old. Uh, to me, it's just ridiculous. And they put the Patriots at 14. So what this says is the AFC East has very, very good player value. Okay, Some of the best talent in the NFL is in the AFC East when the top five has three AFC East teams. Okay, so that was number one. Now, number two was active draft capital. Active draft capital. Now, this is about rookies and their cap space. So what they did is PFF, they converted every rookie contract on each team's current roster into the Fitzgerald Spielberger value. If you know the Jimmy Johnson trade chart, you know what I'm talking about, where this pick is worth this amount of points and that sort of thing. Okay, so Bryce Young, Carolina Panthers quarterback, drafted number one overall, is worth 3,000 points. So this is calculated in points. And the more points you have, the higher uh, draft uh, value you have in terms of your rookies. Okay, and this is important because the NFL rookie wage scale, it's making draft picks more valuable than ever before because you're saving a lot more money than you used to in prior years. So the higher the points, the better the rank. And the Jets came in fourth overall. Okay, so they have a lot of very good players on their rookie deals. Sauce Gardner, Garrett Wilson, Michael Carter, Elijah Vera Tucker, the other Michael Carter. On and on we could go. Can you imagine if Zach Wilson had panned out? Oh my goodness. But the Jets are fourth, and this is really encouraging. Buffalo is 31st, Miami 26th, New England 14th. So what PFF is saying is that the Jets did really, really well the last couple of years with drafting their rookies. Okay, so that's number two. That's where the Jets are doing their best. Now we go to projected cap space for the next three years. So Pro Football Focus is uh, basically calculating how much cap space each team will have over the next three years. 
So they are projecting the Jets to have a total of 137.2 million. That's 21st in the NFL. I think that's really down because eventually they're going to have to start paying some players. Aaron Rodgers is going to have to get paid. Quinn and Williams is going to have to get paid, and so on. Uh, Buffalo is not doing well. They're 30th. Miami is 28th. New England is first in this category. Okay, so New England is projected to have a lot of cap space over the next three years. So count on them being major players in free agency going forward. But I, I do want to say this about Joe Douglas and with the cap space. If you look at dead cap money, and I think this should be factored in, the Jets have the sixth least amount of dead cap money going into the season. The Jets have under $8 million in dead cap money for the 2023 season. The only teams better are Cincinnati, the Chargers, Jacksonville, Buffalo, and Kansas City. The average NFL team, just by comparison, ha has an average of $23.4 million in dead cap space on their salary cap. The Jets are basically a third of that. Just want to point that out as well. So number four, the number four criteria is total prorated money. So this is a situation when a player's salary, part of the salary, is converted to a bonus that prorates over a number of years down the road. So this is typically signing bonuses. Once that happens, it can no longer be manipulated for salary cap purposes. Okay, so basically the least prorated money you have, the better. Now the Jets are 13th here with $177 million in prorated money. Uh, Buffalo is 28th, Miami 19th, New England 2nd. Okay, and the Jets just restructured a whole lot of players this offseason, you know, to afford uh, some future contracts. So it makes sense the Jets are not top of the line, but still 13th is not that bad. And then finally, 2024 free agent valuation. This refers to available free agent cap space next year. Okay, as far as your own players, not outside players, but your own. So this is this involves a little bit of estimating by PFF. They're estimating how much players will be worth next season. Okay, so with Quinn and Williams being a free agent, they're expecting him to make a lot of money. Okay, so that's one reason the Jets are not going to do very well here. Uh, they came in 26, but the whole AFC East team did pretty poorly. Uh, Buffalo is, a, is 23rd, Miami 30th, New England 29th. The thing with the Jets, they have 35 free agents after the season. That, of course, factors in the entire 90-man uh, roster that they currently have. All right, so the Jets are not going to be in a huge position to be big free agent players next season, most likely. So that's something to keep in mind. So what does all this mean? What is the bottom line? Where do the Jets rank overall? You know, uh, what, what is this? What do all these numbers that I've given you mean? Well, the Jets, in terms of this overall exercise, where do they rank among 32 NFL teams? They came in third place overall. The only teams to finish better were Cincinnati and New England. Okay, as I told you, New England is very good with the cap space and with the prorated money, but they don't exactly have a ton of talent uh, right now. So Cincy 1, New England 2, the Jets 3, and as far as the rest of a couple other teams, uh, Miami is 17th, Buffalo is 23rd, and in last place, you know, we all want to know last place, the New Orleans Saints are 32nd overall. Okay, so the whole point of this exercise is not only do the Jets have a great young nucleus of talent, they're in very good salary cap position for the next few years, despite the need to pay Quinn and Williams and the fact that they're going to have Aaron Rodgers on their cap for the foreseeable future. So again, credit to Joe Douglas for working the cap as well as he has. And as a Jets fan, I am super happy that he's my general manager. Well, those are my thoughts. I want to see yours. Put them down there in the comments. Uh, what are your thoughts on Joe Douglas about these numbers that I've given you uh, as far as veteran valuation, the cap space, all that stuff? And does it change your opinion on where the Jets stand overall in the AFC East? Well, thanks everybody for watching. I know it was a lot of numbers, so I appreciate you checking it out. Thanks for watching. I'll see you right back here with more content from you know where. The Wicker Chair.